Hello everyone, uh, this is Ricky from Data Mastery and in this video we are going to talk about how to set up QuickSight and start using QuickSight to visualize the data. So first thing that we need to do is to sign up for QuickSight. So log into your AWS account and search for QuickSight. When you first try to access QuickSight, it will ask you to sign up for QuickSight. Basically, you just have to click on this link and it will ask uh, some additional details like uh, email for account notification, and if you have uh, AWS IAM Identity Center, you can just use this for authentication. If you have your Active Directory, you can use that for authentication as well. You can also set up AWS IAM credentials or QuickSight credentials for authentication. So there are various authentication methods that you have to uh, select from. And then where do you want to deploy this? Uh, do you wanna use in uh, North Virginia or whatever region, you just have to pick that region from the dropdown. And then you have to provide a kind of your QuickSight account nickname here. So you can provide any account name that you want to wish. When you use QuickSight, you access data from other AWS services, mostly uh, from S3 and Athena, but you can also access data from RDS and Redshift. So you have to allow QuickSight uh, access to the other AWS services. Now, for example, here, you can allow access to Redshift, RDS, IAM. So I don't want to, uh, access to RDS or Redshift. I want access to Athena. If you want to directly query your S3 buckets, you can select those buckets as well. So I'm just gonna select all, but you can select the specific buckets as well. And you can also access other services like open search, uh, S3 storage analytics, secrets manager. So there are like uh, plenty of services that integrates well with QuickSight. There is an additional add-on if you want to opt for, I just gonna deselect it. So let's put an email address here. I'm gonna use ricky at datamastery.pro. And then for the authentication method, I will just keep the first one, which is uh, the default method. Basically, it will allow me to create uh, users in the quick site, but you can also use the identity center if you already have set one or active directory, if you have active directory set up in your environment. For the quick site account name, I'll call it data mastery. For the IAM role, I'm just gonna keep the default option here. So I don't need access to Redshift or RDS. I don't even need access to IAM. I'll just select all the buckets and Athena, there's all I need and click on finish. A quick side, although it is an AWS services, but it kinds of acts like an independent service in itself. Because when you're setting up your quick site, you can see that it's creating your account. And you can also see in the browser that uh, the URL has been changed to quicksite.aws.amazon.com. So this is actually a different service, but it's uh, fully integrated with AWS. So it takes a minute or so to set up your quick site account. And now you can go to QuickSight and start exploring the data. It is going to set up some samples which will help you to understand the functionality of QuickSight. You can see that some of the sample uh, dashboards like business review, people overview and all that stuff now, one thing that we need to do right now is before we start analyzing the data or visualizing the data, the first thing we need to do is to connect with our data sources. You can see that we have uh, four data sets, which are sample or dummy data sets. We don't need them and we can just delete those. So you can delete these data sets because we don't need them and it's gonna take unnecessary uh, storage. So one thing that uh, we need to do, first of all, is to click on a new data set. And here you have multiple options, like what kind of source that you want to connect to. You can connect directly to S3, but we are going to use uh, Athena. 
If you haven't watched one of my previous videos where I have explained how to set up Athena, please do go and watch that video. Basically, uh, what I explained in that video is to store your data in S3 and then use Athena on top of S3 to query the data. And now we're going to use Athena with QuickSight uh, to query the same data and visualize that. So click on Athena. The name of the data source, let, let's call it uh, sales, I guess. And click on create data source. And I have sales database in Athena, so I'm going to select that. And within sales database, I have a table called Data Mastery Athena Demo. So I'm going to select that as well and click on select. Now, you can query the data directly or you can import the data to SPICE. SPICE is an in-memory uh, database which allows you to process the data much faster. So instead of directly querying the data from S3, we will query the data and store to SPICE storage or SPICE database, which is in-memory database. And then everything that we need to do on that data, we will leverage the SPICE storage. So that makes this uh, overall visualization and analytics much faster. It makes a lot of uh, impact if you have a large amount of data, but if you have only a few rows of data, then you can directly query the data. It won't uh, have much performance improvement, but it's a good practice to use SPICE. Do you want to email owners when a refresh fails? Okay, keep that uh, option enabled. And I'm just going to visualize it. Now, when I click on visualize, it will start importing the data. And you can see that it has picked the, the schema from the Athena table that we have. We have customer ID, order date, order ID price and everything. Let's go back to the data set that we created. So click on data and go to the data sets. And you can see that the status is available and the, whatever the data that we had in this table has been imported into the SPICE database. One thing that you can do is click on this new tab in the browser and go to your data sets. And here you can see the size of your data set. So we have like 673 bytes because we only have five rows in the table and all the rows are imported, which shows you 100% success. Now let's say that uh, you keep on adding new data. What we can do is we can uh, set up the schedule uh, for refreshing the data in the SPICE database. You can refresh them it manually. When you refresh manually, it will import the data from the table to the SPICE database. You can also set up a schedule, let's say, you have new data coming into your S3 bucket, which is read by Athena. And let's say the data comes once every day. And then you, based on that uh, frequency of data being dropped into S3, you can set up your data refresh schedule in QuickSight as well. And now we have the data in, in QuickSight. Uh, all we need to do is to start visualizing the data. So let's click on the visual and uh, here you can put the dimensions. Let's put a product ID here. And let me remove this one. Now I put a product ID and it shows you the count of that specific product ID. So product ID 1001, it was purchased two times and 1002 was purchased one time, so on and so forth. So you can start playing with this. Uh, let's try to add more visuals here. Click on visualize and here you have um, different types of uh, uh, visuals that you can add to your dashboard. For this one, we have product ID and let's also pick, uh, for example, a region. So then we will have product IDs grouped by region. We have East, North, South, West. And when you split the data regionally, you see that the product ID 1001 was purchased in North and 1002 was purchased in East. So you start getting more insights uh, from your data. Now you can add different types of uh, charts here. For example, let's add uh, a table. 
So for table, you need to add one dimension in the group by and one measure in the value. So again, let's say we have a product ID. Next, I'm going to add another dimension. Let's call it, let's add order date. So I have two dimensions now. One is the product ID, other is the order date. It tells you when that product was purchased or ordered. And you can also add another, which is customer ID. So now you can see that we have a customer ID 501 who ordered 1001 product ID on two different dates. And then let's say if you want to add the total amount. So as you can see, you can visualize the data using these uh, uh, visuals, or you can also put the a table format as well. So in case you want to display some data in the tabular format, that is also supported by uh, QuickSight. So you can play with this and try to add different types of visuals in your dashboard and see what type of insights you get out of your data. The other thing that QuickSight allows is to use the calculator fields. So in the calculator fields, it provides lots of built-in functions which you can use uh, to create derived columns in the, in the data. So some of the columns which are not available in your actual or the original data set, you can use these calculated fields to create the derived columns. And you can also define some filters on your visuals. For example, if you select this visual and click on filter and click on add, select any column that you want to apply the filter on. And here you can see we have different types of uh, uh, filtering conditions. You want to include these values or exclude these values. And you have the custom filter list. And then you can just select or deselect whatever the values that you want to be included. You can also format the visual. Click on this format visual and it will give you some additional information on the right. For example, you can apply the data labels here. Uh, you can you know, hide or show the legend and you can configure the values on the x-axis if you want to show or hide the labels. Similarly, you can configure the values on the y-axis uh, if you want to change the product ID to let's say call it product ID, something like this. So there are different types of options that you can uh, you know, configure in this uh, formatting configuration of the visuals. Now let's assume that this is the dashboard that I, I wanted to create and I have this dashboard up and running. Now how you can consume this dashboard in your application or how you can share it with others. So what I can do is once I finish my uh, formatting and setting up the visuals, I can publish this dashboard. So let's call it uh, sales and then click on publish dashboard. Now this is the dashboard which you can share with others and you can also embed this uh, in your applications. There are multiple options here. For example, you can save this and you can share this uh, uh, dashboard and you can export the data in this dashboard as a, a CSV. So there are different options that you can do with uh, this dashboard after publishing it. And let's say now you want to make uh, changes again. You go back to QuickSight and you go back to Analysis and click on Analysis, uh, make some modifications and publish again. And when you publish again, you can, instead of creating a new one, you can select this option, which says that replace an existing dashboard. So this way, people who have the link of your dashboard, once they refresh it, they will get the updated visuals or updated data that you have configured in the analysis. So that's all about how you can get started with QuickSight. It is fairly simple and straightforward process. All you need to have is data that you have set up in your, let's say in AWS account or, or other source system. And then you can connect that source system with your Athena, pull the data, start visualizing, and then publish the dashboard. Hope you find this video helpful and hope it will help you to get started with QuickSight. If you have any question, please drop your questions in the comment section of this video. And if you like this video, please hit the thumbs up icon on YouTube. 
and subscribe to our channel to get notification about the latest videos that we upload to our channel. Thanks for watching. Cheers.